I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hi there, it's Oops the Podcast. Welcome back to another brand new episode. I'm Francis and I'm joined by my co-host Giulio Gallarotti. What's happening? <laughs> I liked Gallarotti. Yeah, I hit all of the letters in your name Consonants. there. Consonants. You, you Italians, man. Dude. Went to a very Italian wedding over the weekend. Really? Just dive right into weddings. <laughs> Never too far from that subject. It was an Italian wedding? Yeah. The, the well, I thought you said it was a Jewish wedding. Well, the husband is Jewish. Got it. And then the gr- the bride was is very Italian. So did you find that what they say is true? They're always like, oh, they so they're so similar. Those two Italians people say that Jewish people, yeah, people love to say that. Huh? Uh, I did not know that. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I I think in some ways probably, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but it was really cool because it was two very different cultures kind of blending, and and you saw that especially through their parents, and what it meant to them, and I. You know, I was appreciative of of the cultural aspect of this wedding. I was kind of fascinated by it, to be honest. Had you been to, or have you been to many Jewish weddings? I have, but not ones that were as traditional as this one. Got it, got it. Um, and it's very interesting to watch a rabbi try to invoke modern lessons and humor into uh, while maintaining a, a traditional structure. I find that they tend to be the best at that. They're certainly better, no offense, they're certainly better than Catholic priests. Yeah, no, I agree. Catholic mass weddings are very, very old-fashioned. I would say any sort of denomination of Christianity tends to be much more old-fashioned than one conducted by a rabbi, is what I have found. Interesting. Now, granted, this was not, uh, an, I don't think it was an Orthodox wedding, and mm-hmm. may, maybe Orthodox or Hasidic wedding ceremonies are more rigid and kind of by the book torah portions old-fashioned but but like i would say even a very moderately religious christian wedding whoever's conducting it assuming they're actually a person of the cloth Mm. as they say Mm -hmm. it tends to just be far more traditional interesting like like rabbis something about them dude they're just like they're pretty good up there yeah (laughs) Yeah, they are. They're pretty fucking good up They're there. They're pretty dude. good up there. They are. They're showmen. They really are good. They're showmen. They, they they rise to the occasion. They really are good. Yeah, this guy was solid. He was very solid. <laughs> and I, I have to say that the the drinking of the wine from the cup and then the putting of the cup into the pillowcase or whatever it is, and then the smashing of the cup with the mazel tov is maybe the best way, uh, the best practice of ending a wedding. It's pretty great. That is that is the most short of fireworks or a, a, a ten gun salute. That is uh, the best, you know, send off. The mm-hmm. best, like you may kiss the bride moment of of any wedding. I think. Did you wear a yarmulke? I did. The ceremony. You did. I did. They were passing them around. Oh, right? They sure were. He threw one on. We all did. Good for you, man. We all did. And then I said to my friend who's Jewish, I said, "Is there an element of?" Um, cultural appropriation here am i doing something that's a little not you know frowned upon right. and he said no not at all what by wearing it it's a sign of respect oh wow which i didn't know i didn't know that either that anyone who does wear it is actually showing respect interesting um now i'll be interested to hear if anyone has any more insight on that i am i, I am not against the idea of you know wearing what they wear at a thing you know what I mean? And I'm thinking back to some of the Jewish weddings I've been to. I don't know that I did put it on, mm. but if they were like, dude, put this on, it's like, good luck. Just do it. I probably would just do it. Well, it's super interesting. I remember, I mean, I went to a Catholic wedding once and, um, you know, they, they invite everyone up to do the, the Eucharist. Yes. And they say that if you don't want the Eucharist and you would prefer to just have a blessing when you get up there, you just cross your arms over your chest like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing was that I, this was a very, very dear friend of mine. And 
I had gone to the rehearsal dinner where I had met the priest who was to officiate the wedding the next day. And he and I had a nice conversation. And he clearly took a shine to me. (laughs) Such that when I went up for the fucking Eucharist (laughs) and crossed my arms, I I swear to you, I watched the disappointment cross his face like a dark cloud. Dude, I thought you were going to say that you made you more like willing to take the body of Christ. No, I I felt like that would be out of bounds because I think you're supposed to be Catholic in order to do that. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I was baptized, but I don't really know. I much. was baptized as well, but the, the, you know, I'm I'm a I guess technically Protestant, uh Episcopalian. Mm-hmm. And unless you're Catholic, I think partaking in the eating of the wafer, which is meant to symbolize the the body of Christ and drinking of the wine, the blood of Christ is sacrilegious. I think, mm. I think. Yeah, I don't know what the what uh, how I feel about that kind of stuff. I mean, like, I guess it doesn't matter that much. No, it matters. Weigh in. No, like I'm saying, it doesn't matter that much in the sense of like, I typically don't do it because I just don't want to get up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, but like I don't really care that much. I don't feel I don't feel like it's that significant to like eat a cracker and drink a little grape juice. I, mean, I know that it's significant, and I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm saying like I'm not like against it. Like I'll do it, I don't, you know. Yeah, I would do it. Whatever. I and I I don't think that I, I would do it. Do. I'm used, especially if I'm hungry or thirsty. The moral of the story is: I think if I'm involved in any sort of unfamiliar environment like that, I'd be more likely to do it. Mm-hmm. Things that I'm more familiar with, I'm kind of like, all right, whatever. I don't need to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I don't. I don't feel strongly about it. Um, and I don't want to go against the grain just to like prove a point because there's. I don't really have a point to prove. I don't care. Gotcha. I only, dude, I only care about myself at this point, dude. Nice. I'm trying, I would like to better my own life and my family's life. Being opposed to very innocent rituals is very low on my list of things <laughs> that I'm opposing. I hear you. Uh, Chris, <laughs> did you have any uh, clarification on that take I, I had? I mean, not really. I'm only getting like super religious answers. Oh. So I don't know what the actual... Okay, then never mind. We'll, see, we'll have someone weigh in who is a little closer to the, to the faith. Um, Dude, another fun thing is the chair. So this is a really interesting one. I'm glad you brought that up because we definitely did that. That's a right? fun time. And they always, it's so fun to watch the strongest guys at the wedding gather each other. <laughs> like we're going to need you and you, you look big. We're going to need you. We're lifting, we're, you know, we're doing the chair and some, cause the, the band starts playing Hava Nagila and everyone goes and grabs the chair and the, everyone, it's looking around, and then, and then there's always one littler guy who tries to like get in there, you know, because he wants to take part, but he's not really helping. But it was great. The you know the couple, so that's such a fun part of the wedding. But then we hoisted the the father and the mother of the bride, and the dad was a you know he's a slightly bigger guy. And even though we had all these big dudes, were you involved? No, I wasn't. I was too fucked up. Were you upset about the fact that you weren't asked? No, I, I, I think I was asked, and, uh, and I you declined. politely declined. I said I'm too messed up right now to try to hoist someone and bounce them in the air on the chair. <laughs> um, but I watched them, and and it was very apparent that with the father of the bride, they were not getting him to the heights that they had That's achieved funny. with the groom. <laughs> Just moments earlier. <laughs> and you could see them struggling. And all those guys came off the dance floor after having done the hoisting. And they were all really sweating. <laughs> they were like, I need a minute, you know? Dude, that's funny. But here's a question. I have now seen the Hava Nagila chair hoisting at non-Jewish weddings. Oh, really? Which, again, I thought that was... Cultural very clear cultural <laughs> appropriation and again i don't have any problem with cultural this is not my fight okay yeah. if it's not it's far be it for me to be arbiter of what is and is not cultural appropriation i'm not complaining about that i'm simply wondering is somebody who does have a high sensitivity to cultural appropriation would they take issue with that well here's my answer to that and i don't know if this is an indirect answer but it's like why if we're just using good things from other people, why must that be considered cultural appropriation? Well, let's assume cult- cultural appropriation is a bad thing. 
Let's assume that, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say that there are examples that we're not thinking of that are actually, you know, offensive and harmful and hurtful to people. I think that doing a fun thing from someone else's culture, I don't see how that's bad. Like that's a fun, cool thing that they do. Therefore, paying homage to it doesn't seem super offensive to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, why does that have to be different than cooking other people's food that's really good? Or listening to other people's music and liking it. Like, I just think that that's kind of falls in line with that as opposed to what might be considered harmful cultural appropriation. Yes. How do you feel about that? Well, I think there are very distinct examples where you can say <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this. Why would cooking someone's dish be anything other than honoring their culture? Mm hmm. Um, and then there are others that are clearly harmful. And then there are probably a bunch that fall somewhere in the middle that are a little harder to determine. Mm -hmm. But here's one that I think is really interesting. Okay. So, and I read, this was from Michael Pollan's book, um, This Is Your Mind on Plants, which was our second book for the Francis Ellis Boozy Book Club on the Patreon, which went really well. Um, but he talks about peyote, mm -hmm. which is obviously the Native American um, cactus, which they ingest, uh, as part of their, you know, spiritual sort of sessions. Have we determined that that's the same as mescaline? Mescaline, I think is a, is a derivative of okay. peyote. Got it. Um, but for the sake of this story, we'll, we'll, we'll use them um, synonymously. So peyote. Yeah. And the thing is that there is a finite number of peyote cacti remaining. And the Native American community relies on it as a medicine and has done for many, many decades, if not hundreds of years. And as, of course, you know, tourists and non native peoples have caught wind of the incredible, uh, hallucinogenic properties of of this plant they have gone to try to find them and and raid them as they call it poaching I was the, the cacti themselves which depletes the store right. and by the way you can synthesize this cactus you can grow it in a greenhouse but the native american peoples say that that is not authentic peyote and they refuse to touch it so got it if you and I were to go into the desert and pick a few of these, we would technically be taking from what is a very sacred uh, plant to this people, and that is harmful cultural appropriation. I feel like that is poaching, not cultural appropriation. Well, we would be then doing it to, to try to get the trip that yeah. they do. But we also know that it can be synthesized, so then why not just synthesize it? And let them keep their finite stash. It seems like there's a because well, maybe solution. you and I are so taken with the story of these TP sessions, which is what they are, and maybe we would erect our own TP and go get. We would want to do it as close to. We want to mimic the practice as much as possible. I mean, I don't see why we couldn't just go up to Maine, pitch a TP in your backyard. Get some synthesized peyote when you when your folks are out of town, and uh, you know take a nice pic view of the lake or whatever. I, I know there's a bo I know there's a body of water nearby. Lots of lakes, also ocean. <laughs> ocean. We, we could choose. Yeah, that's fun. Um, no, I, I hear what you're saying, and I guess that does sound like a harmful. I just don't know. Is that cultural appropriation? Like, I, I guess. Like, I don't even know, dude. Yeah, if we if we went and did it because of, you know, the fact that we thought that the fact that we thought that Native Americans doing this was cool, we wanted to do it too. Wouldn't just doing the ritual be cultural appropriation as well in theory if we were talk I mean, whatever. Yeah, 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 probably. If yeah. we went up to Maine and pitched a teepee and did it, that feels worse than if we were just like in our kitchen doing yeah, synthesized right. mescaline. Right. I agree with that. <sighs> Dude, I don't know. Well, dude, as far as as wedding rituals go, you want to hear a funny one? Yeah. So I went to my buddy Hans's wedding, and this was sort of, and Hans is Indian, but his wife was Palestinian, and it was in her town. That's really interesting. Those two cultures, those countries do not get along. Yeah, do they not? No. Really? They've been at war 
or on the brink of war for many, many years. Interesting. Especially in the north of Pakistan, which borders India. There's a very Palestine. contested... Palestine. You said Pakistan. Palestinian. Palestinian and Indian? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah, that's different. No, I know Pakistan and India. Yeah. Um, Did you not say Pakistan? Did I he say Palestine? I'm pretty sure I said Palestinian. Okay, well, if I, I did, reacted. Uh, listen, I, apparently I do this all the time. I, th I think I said something and Hillary is convinced I didn't. So it's very possible that I said Pakistani instead of Palestinian. Got but it. I wouldn't have said Pakistanian. So that I have trouble imagining that I said Pakistani and not Palestinian. Okay. Anywho, mm -hmm. um, it was a Palestinian wedding. And I just remember this happening. This guy, Izzo, who we're friends with, he comes out, he goes, dude, Hans is about to sword fight Audrey's father for her virginity. We got to watch this. What? <laughs> And they and they did they did some sort of ceremonial sword fighting dance thing, and I was like, "This is hilarious." For dude. her, for the express purpose of of her virginity, I get you know I'm assuming that per, you know her virginity was not intact at that point. No, but but the, the, it, that's what it's for. The you know as a, ceremonially as a symbolic fight for that ceremonially. Yes, and this wedding was in Arkansas, where apparently there's a big Palestinian population. Uh, and it was very, uh, if there was a lot of stuff, I learned a lot of stuff. I didn't know that there was that enclave there. I didn't know about this sword fight dance, uh, but it was all awesome. Wow. That and is cool. I How, really um, it. choreographed was it? I don't really recall, to be honest. Were you uh, pretty banged up? Potentially. Yes. Mm. Potentially. Yes. But you hold your booze really well. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I guess my question is, was it? a choreographed sword fight or were they just up there click clacking away? I don't think that they had to do any preparation sort of thing for it. I think they kind of, I think I, I my, my memory of it was it being some kind of very straightforward thing that Hans could do on the fly without having to train. He's going to be mad at me if I'm wrong about that. That's disappointing. Um, but it I was cool. It was cool. I love yeah. little stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. I had never been to, you know, that kind of wedding, I guess. And it was interesting. If I were a member of either of those cultures and that were happening at my wedding, I would hire a true fight choreographer to make it incredible. <laughs> like because, a John Wick. Well, scene. think about this. So, you know, you know, the first dance, obviously, between the couple, uh -huh. some couples choreograph and some couples just do do it on the fly, improvise it, whatever. But it, I, I don't know. Do you have a, do you prefer one or the other, by the way? Uh... Do you like to watch the, the couple do a dance that's, Got steps. It just depends who they are, dude. Like, if the couple's really good at dancing, then I'm like, okay, dude. Like, there was no need for this. I, I, that's a great answer. <laughs> that is exactly what I would have said. <laughs> I, I completely agree. You know, it, yeah, no offense, but again, I'm saying no offense. I don't know why I'm saying that. Nobody fucking cares. <laughs> if you're not good at dancing, you should maybe take some dance classes and have someone choreograph it for you. Because if you're up there and you know have no idea how to dance and you just look awkward, that's tough to watch. I did, yeah, agreed, agreed. But wait, 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 hold on, sorry. I might have missed the details there. Wait, so are you saying that... My, my comparison was going to be that sometimes people choreograph the first dance and sometimes they don't. But if I were doing the sword fight for the virginity, I would definitely want that choreographed. Wait, fine, but, but the, the dancing... You agree with me, right? Yes, I agree okay, with okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, that was I, the perfect I got answer. I got confused. That yeah, there's, there's, nice something ni there's something annoying about using something as a vessel to showcase a talent that you've already honed. Really? Yes. Because you're what I'm describing our job. <laughs> I know that, but no, but no, no, but I'm not actually because <laughs> because if at my own wedding I got up and did 20 minutes of stand up, you're right, and disguised it <laughs> as a speech and just started roasting everybody, that's annoying as fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where uh, the same thing with dancing. It's like, okay, dude, like I get it. You're an incredible dancer. Like you were on fucking dancing with the stars. There's no need for you to do a dancing with the stars routine right now. Whatever. You know I what gotcha. I mean? So at this wedding, the groom had surprise had a surprise for the bride, which was that he had he plays the guitar a little bit. Um but it's not something that he off he, he never displays it. So nobody really knows where okay. he's at. Okay. And he had learned to play the Leon Bridges song. I don't even know what it's called. Oh me. Oh my. I can't explain. Might just be my everything. You know that one? Uh, potentially. Okay. Well, it's a great song. <laughs> and he gets up in the middle of the wedding and with his guitar straps it on. People are going nuts. 
gets in with the band, had, I guess, rehearsed this with the band somehow. And he gets up there and he plays it with the guitar and he brought the house down. That's great. And I think part of that is that nobody really knew yes. whether he'd be able to pull this off. So yes. it's it's a little bit like that America's Got Talent moment where <laughs> you're like, Susan the guy Boyle? gets up there and he's like, I do the guitar every once in a while. Just my mom always told me, you know, you've got to pursue your passion. Yeah. And, and, he, and he's like, nobody's ever heard me play before. You know, and then like the guy wins and then two months later, someone exposes the fact that he'd actually been like signed by Rockefeller oh, when right. he was 14. And he put in the, the uh, yeah, is that like the Susan Boyle thing? The, the really bad one was Paul Potts or Paul Pot. Isn't that the Paul, guy? Isn't that the guy who was the Cambodian dictator? <laughs> Paul Pot. Yeah. He just murdered his, all his people. You're right. He who got, am I talking up, about? He got up there and acted like he was innocent, but he murdered his guy's name. He won the like America's, he won Britain's Got Talent. You, it's Paul, Paul. Maybe it was Paul, Paul Potts. Hang on. Yeah, it is Paul Potts. Yeah, it's that guy. <laughs> so he went on, this was like the original viral video okay. of these talent shows. Uh, he won Britain's Got Talent in um, the first season, 2007. He came on and sang opera with the whole backstory being that he'd been working at a car phone warehouse, which is like a mobile phone store. Mm -hmm. And that on, you know, on the side, he was just casually dabbling in opera. And of course he comes out with this incredibly Incredible. honed operatic voice. But the truth was that he had, yeah, like he'd had a, a, a decent, <laughs> yeah, he'd had a decent career or something in opera got it, got it. prior to this. So, you know, they clever dressed it up that. a little. That's clever. Yeah. Make for good TV, brother. Exactly. Dude, that's funny. Anyway, good wedding though. Really fun. It was what was cool about it too was that it was a a New York wedding, a New York City wedding. It's always nice. Well, you 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 could take sleep the subway bed, there. Sleep in your bed. You sleep in your own bed. You come home. You just take your tuxedo off and you throw it in a heap on the floor. The problem with with that with the subway is that you typically are wearing a tuxedo at a New York wedding and you just can't take the subway in your tuxedo, dude. We sure didn't. You just can't. We sure didn't but take whatever. a tuxedo. It's still, it's that, that expensive Uber is still much better than a weekend of hotel rooms. You know what we actually did was a bunch of us met at a cool hotel, Soho Grand downtown, got some cocky poos, and then we <laughs> hired a limo. Oh, that's fun. That's and we fun. made it a prom kind that's of vibe. Fun. That's fun. When was the last time you guys were in a limo? So, dude, it's funny. This guy I'm friends with, uh, in LA, he just, he bought a limo cause he's like, dude, limos are great. And like, nobody really fucks with limos anymore. So I just bought one. He goes, I hire my buddy Brad here. And Brad kind of on cue looks in the rearview mirror and goes, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and then he pressed the button. Like, okay, Brad, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I just bought, you know, he goes, and now I got a limo and it's fucking awesome. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I guess it is. dude. <laughs> that, I think that was maybe the last time I was in one a couple nice. of years ago. Gotcha. Um, love that. Well, dude, uh, so we have a new sponsor, and I feel like this is a little bit controversial because okay. you all know about my girlfriend's severe nut allergy. Mm. So I feel like a little bit of a sellout here, but I actually don't because at the end of the day, dude, when Hill Dog is out of town, as you know, I hit the shoes hard, dude. Yeah, he does. The cashews, the pistachios. Even when we left the Greece, shows, there, the were, shoes. there were a bunch of free... The shows, the shoes. There were a bunch of free... <laughs> things of nuts in our room and i took them all with me because we were traveling separately and i was just crushing them dude wow uh, so we are proud to announce uh our new partnership with nuts.com nuts.com <laughs> so dude actually nuts.com is really the best kept secret of savvy snackers in general because they have all sorts of really fancy nut options like you know the chocolate toffee cashews the bourbon pecans oh. crystallized ginger honey and honey sesame sticks as you might have noticed, the last two things are not nuts. So this is your place for, honestly, everything snacks, yeah. everything hors d'oeuvres, everything start your party, as long as Hill Dog is not there. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you choose to exercise this promo code and invite Hill Dog, you are no longer an, an ally of Oops the Podcast. Yeah, especially if you make out with her. Yeah, please don't make out with her. Don't make out with her. <laughs> please do not make out with her. Uh, dude, this place is great. Uh, they have over 4,000 products to choose from at nuts.com. Yeah. Uh, nuts.com is amazing and uh, highly recommend going in there shopping around new nuts.com customers get free shipping on your first order when you text oops to 64,000 so text oops to 64,000 to get free shipping on your first order from nuts.com that's oops to 64,000 
Do not invite Hill Dog. Terms apply. Available at nuts.com slash terms. And I'm just I'm just double checking. That's six four zero zero zero, not six four zero zero, right? Sixty four thousand. Six four zero zero zero. Cool. Love that. I also now I'm picturing this scene where <laughs> Hillary comes home from a weekend away and some reason gets on your computer and your browser history is just like nuts.com, <laughs> like nuts.com wearing thong, like whatever. And she's like, what's this about? And you're like, oh no, that was nothing. I got bored. You know, it's just, that's your like porn addiction. Yeah, dude. I, yeah, it's funny. I've like joked a little about that before. It's like most people when their girl goes out of town, they do all sorts of bad shit. For me, I just have my naughty little snack. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Love that, man. Um, dude, so we were chuckling, and we've been laughing about this amongst ourselves for you know the past week, um, about uh, me almost ruining the U.S. Open surprise. <laughs> yes. And this is funny, dude. You don't know this. I met up with your girlfriend on Saturday night. This sounds That sounds worse than what it actually was. Francis was doing his gig uh, yeah, out of town. That's right. My girlfriend, so I had a bunch of spots that night. I finished at like 1230 and Hillary, Sierra, sorry. That's okay. Uh, Hillary, Sierra, and a couple other of their pals. <laughs> the cat is out of the bag. Okay, so that her I, name I, is I'm Sierra. the one who keeps saying no, it's her, fine. Francis' girl's name. People, well, here's, uh, can I pause you for one second? Sure. Okay, because this is a, an important thing. People have started DMing me, asking me if I give them my permission to follow her on Instagram, mm -hmm. which is very strange. People have asked me the same. Yeah, and and in a way I appreciate it, but one, I don't own her. She's not, you know, yes. my my donkey or something. <laughs> and two, uh, she is a very private person, and on, she's got like 300 or 400 non-confirmed followers. Like she, they're just, they asked if they could follow her and she doesn't do it. And that's nothing against you guys. The problem is that I, you know, I worked at Barstool for a long time. God bless Barstool, but there are a lot of people that um, that are a little bit uh, eh, their their intentions are less than less than honorable. Um, and whether that's because they would then want to DM her and and send her some nasty things about me, or I don't even know for whatever reason. So that's why I taught her from a very early point in our relationship you mustn't ever accept or she made that choice to be honest with you so she probably won't accept you um and so therefore if you wouldn't mind you know don't don't try to interact with her too much let's just let her live her life she didn't <laughs> she didn't sign up for any of this so uh i appreciate you guys just uh letting her be um and that that's that's all i have on that okay anyhow anywho whatever we met up yes at the bar you and met up with uh, Fiera. <laughs> we met up with Fiera. Guy Fiera. Hill Dog and a few other of their friends. And <laughs> guy, guy Fiera. Some people say Guy Fiera, like it's a D, but actually it's Fiera. Um, but dude, I linked up with them. Never and mind. at one point we're standing at the bar and Guy... Yeah, <laughs> your your girlfriend, Gal Gal uh, Fiera. <laughs> she said to me, "She's like, I heard about how you almost ruined the surprise, mm. ha ha ha." And I wasn't sure if we were talking about the same thing. <laughs> so now you were careful. <laughs> so now I was like, "What are you? What are you talking about?" And she goes, "You know the U.S. Open." And I was like, "You guys are going to the U.S. Open." <laughs> uh. <laughs> and she goes, "I know." He told me, and I was like. And then I was like, okay, I think that. Yeah, I think I think we're clear. Um, but dude, how was it? We had a great time. Um, it was super cool. You know, it's uh, tennis. I, growing up, I went to hockey games, basketball games, baseball games, even even a couple football games. But tennis is a sport that going to is just a totally different experience than going to any other sporting event. In what way? Well, for one. You have to be silent during the point. Right. So there are these intermittent eruptions of excitement. And then you have to fucking calm down. Yeah. And and if people don't, the chair umpire goes, ladies and gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. The players, the players are ready, please. The players are ready. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> and then if people keep yelling, people in the crowd start going, shh. 
Yeah, yeah. Good. And Samaritans. it's like you were screaming five seconds ago. Yeah. So you know, it's it's a very strange thing where it's this up and down level of excitement and uh people have to gather themselves and not get not not to, not get over their toes a little bit um and reel it in every every 20 seconds and then be quiet and, and attentive and then they get excited again and mm -hmm. you know it's it's super intense dude so i watched something funny happen i was watching the matches that francis was at and at one point during one of the points uh i think the ball looked like it might have been out but it wasn't the point continued and these women screamed out in the middle of the point, like very noticeably, very loud. The cameraman was able to find them and they were sort of like laughing and embarrassed. And the one lady was like holding a glass of rosé and John McEnroe without skipping a beat is just like, looks like one too many pops. <laughs> 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 looks like one too many pops. For I love dude. it. Well, uh, dude, that, that I'm glad you brought this up <laughs> because here's something that really bothered me. Because mm. I've been to one tennis match before. It was actually our third date. We went to the U.S. Open three years ago. Um, I know. I but, just found that out too, Chris. But we had much. We we had much higher up seats, so we had re we had really good seats this time, and you know, totally different perspective. But there, the, there was a woman sitting right next to me who was probably like forty five, fifty, but she was you know throwing back a few of the honey deuces that we mm. talked about. The cocky poos that are uh, 20, signature. 20 bucks a pop, but worth every penny. Pot. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are expensive. Um, and she's throwing a couple of these back. And we're watching these points. And she is making sounds with each hit. <laughs> because from where you sit, you don't necessarily know if the ball's going over the net after the guy hits it. And a couple of the times, they'd be very low over the net. And she would go, oh, <laughs> oh, like because uh, uh, she wanted the American guy to win so badly, and it, you know he was playing Djokovic, who just doesn't make mistakes, and so yeah. it's very you're you're holding on for dear life. She's sitting on the edge of her seat, and then Djokovic would hit a deep ball that would kind of clip the line, and she would go that out, that's out, <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's fucking not. Right, there's literally electronic line judges. Electronic now. line judges. People who are on the court that have a better view than us, you moron. Dude, no, there's literally no line judges anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. There, for this tournament, and this is a COVID era thing that may end up being the norm, but there is only a chair umpire. And the chair umpire cannot overrule the electronic line the lines because it, they are 100% accurate. Amazing. Well, yeah. even even better. Even better. My so robots <laughs> even better. Robots are disagreeing with this lady. Yes. <laughs> and she she thinks that somehow she's, you know, there there is unfair officiating at play. Yeah. And that her view is the right one. Totally. That she's calling the fucking shots. Dude, it's so and funny. it really bugged me. Yeah. It's it annoying bugged as me. Fuck. It was much more annoying than going to a Celtics game and having someone be like, You're blowing the fucking game, ref. <laughs> Come you on, know? dude. Dude, my dad always jokes about this. He's like, tennis players are so pampered. And as you know, we're a tennis family. He goes, he goes, Russell Westbrook's expected to make free throws with a thousand drunk maniacs waving those stupid bats in front of his face. Yeah, yeah tennis players need complete silence to serve. He's like, that's bullshit. It's that. It it's, is funny. It's tennis and golf, man. You know, yeah. there's this weird hushed yeah. intensity and decorum to to watching this go down. And and someone made a good point too. It's like if they weren't so pampered, like if they were used to having to do it through the noise. They'd get used to it and it would be fine. It'd be fine. But there's something nice about, I, I don't mind the, No. maybe it's because I'm used to it, but I don't mind the culture of like, no. making it be quiet or whatever. Yeah, so Dude, some, we, sorry. Nice time. Yeah. Something funny happened when I went, uh, at the beginning, I went like a few days before you did. Um, and I'm in the bathroom and I look to my right and I see this guy who just looks exactly like Blake Griffin. And I was like, oh my God, that guy looks exactly like Blake Griffin. That's crazy. He must be Blake Griffin's brother or something. And then I look to the left, and then there's actually Blake Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it probably was his brother, and they were yeah. probably together. But like, I just thought that was hilarious. I was like, what? Oh, yeah, my that's God. That's great. Did you um, say anything to him? No, dude. You know he's a good comedian. I know. I know. You can kind of tell. You're like, oh, this guy like likes Hollywood better than basketball, maybe, well, he's at some just, point. He's just... Yeah, my theory is that he... He has that career waiting for him. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. But he also knows that basketball, his basketball career is finite. There is a, an end date. 
and he might as well keep going with that as long as he possibly can collecting whatever 12 50, however many millions of dollars it is per year until eventually his body says we're done and then he'll get on stage and start right, flying right. Funny, you know? yeah no totally it's always been interesting to change how he's changed the nature of the way he plays mm -hmm. used to be this big dunker and now he's kind of like a little more of a more facilitator of a player, he can shoot yeah. but he's on the nets too so yeah. he doesn't really need to be mr hammer time anymore. totally 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 I'll still do one every once in a while. Yeah. Um, dude, so I have something funny that I noticed yesterday in the Djokovic speech. So I don't know about you who who's super familiar with tennis or not. Djokovic is sort of this really well-intentioned guy who's sort of the third most popular tennis player. Not even necessarily the third, but they're like Federer and Nadal are so much more popular than him. And yeah. I, it, this gets to him. And I think he wants so badly to be loved. And yet he just keeps getting either things that he brought upon himself or things that he didn't deserve, but he just keeps getting all this bad press. Mm. And he is so, and you can see it in the way he talks. He just wants so badly to not say anything wrong. Like he accidentally hit that line judge in the head with a ball, complete like bad luck. Mm -hmm. Tennis players whack balls into the crowd all the time. Nothing happens. He happened to hit a line judge. He had an, an exhibition event last year. Everybody got COVID. Yeah. Uh, just like there's there's a there's a dozen things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that he's this well-intentioned good guy. And I actually like him a lot. Anyway, Andy Roddick tweeted during the match. He's like, because Djokovic sort of wore down this young American. The young American came out firing, won the first set. Djokovic ends up winning the match. And Andy Roddick tweets, first he takes your legs, then he takes your soul, which is a funny tweet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like Djokovic mm -hmm. is this like unstoppable force. So in the after match speech, Brad Gilbert asked him, he's like, Andy Roddick just tweeted this. What do you say to this? And instead of like laughing because it's funny, he like took the, he like took it seriously and he goes, no, no, the first part maybe, but no, I'm not taking anyone's soul. Everyone has beautiful souls that I'm not, I would never do that. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. Hillary and I just started dying of laughter. Like this poor fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> Accusing him of being the soul stealer. I wonder how much of that to his language barrier because clearly he took it literally. But he speaks English so well. Does he? Yeah. Like mm. so, but, but you're right. Like I've sort of thought that too, but. I don't know, this so, poor guy. So I've been to, he's from Serbia. Serbia. I've been there. Really? Yeah. Do and I know this? I've been to Serbia. I've been to Montenegro. What, just for fun, for shits and giggles? My buddies and I did a trip through sort of the former the Yugoslav states. So where else did you go? You go to Croatia. We drove fun. through Bosnia and Herzegovina. Fun. Was, um, it a, was it a sovereign nation yet? Yes, it was after, well, after the breakup. Um, oh. But there's still simmering distaste or dislike mm -hmm. between some of them right um and i'm not familiar enough with like the the ethnic wars that happened mm -hmm. you know the serbian whatever wars but now um you know there's a lot of tourism some of them have been incorporated into the european union and uh, Novak is is the hero of of many of those countries. Yeah, totally. They embrace him as the, he is the biggest star m to have come from any of those more than more than their soccer players even. Oh uh, yeah, I wonder because they have some good soccer players. They right? sure do. Yeah. yeah, I mean Croatia was in the World Cup final yeah, last, yeah. last World Cup. I, I can't remember. Uh, Fuck. I the guy of the Real Madrid player. Something, something a Zukic or something. Manzukic, Manzukic is very good. Yeah. Um so and he ceremonially like he has a Croatian coach. Like I wonder if that's a thing kind of on purpose yeah, to be like I think they all I think they all all, all those along. countries embrace him. I have a very good movie recommendation speaking of this topic. It was called it's called Quo Vide, Vadis Ida. It was nominated for best document or sorry, best foreign film this year. In my opinion, I crazy that it didn't win it was so much better than all the rest of the movies uh in that category because i watched mm. them all but that's a good one to check out um what's it about it's about like the Shreb srebrenica massacre that happened during the interesting war, which is, okay yeah i checked that out uh, it's really fucking good so check it out um but dude that's so fun you that, that what a fun trip yeah did you like serbia well we didn't really do some of the right things mm. you know we didn't we didn't we didn't do enough research about serbia to to get the trip there right right right, right. um and we flew we were in montenegro first and that has like beautiful waterfront it does there are it's waterfront 
cluttered with cruise ships. Yeah. And then there's casinos too, right? Yeah. And I got very sick. Mm. Very, very sick. I'm not sure if it was drinking the water, if it was something I ate, but but my my roommate that I was staying with, in terms of the hotel room that we were splitting, he and I both got sick oh, and shit. then none of our friends got That's sick. That's so annoying. And I missed a whole a whole day and a half. Uh, throwing up. It's happened to me napping waking up jumping off the bed running to the toilet throwing uh, up dude. going back to sleep fever chills the you know worst. a 36 hour just Sitch. hellscape the uh that's casino royale takes place there too right that famous scene is that right i believe so the gambling scene there takes place in montenegro which is one of the great bond really sequences is. i'm eager to see the new bond me too me yeah. too i've been seeing the commercials yeah very fucking cool well, dude, if you find yourself in Montenegro again, a great uh, thing to bring with you, obviously, the bird dog shorts. Yeah, of course. You can wear them at the craps table. You can wear them in the water, and you can wear them when you're sprinting in the toilet to throw up. Am I? <laughs> after I, getting food poisoning. I'm almost like insulted that you're telling me this because I know <laughs> that bird dogs is a very important thing to bring to Montenegro. <laughs> I was saying it to our listeners, Francis, okay, not fine. to you directly. Okay, fine. Don't but I mean, offended. you and I both would tell everybody, bring your bird dogs with you when you go to Montenegro. <laughs> Of course we would. Of course we would say that. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate travel short. They have they have amazing pants too, and, and great joggers. The and the new joggers, which are the hot hot item. Hot there's some item. good. There's some good hiking in the Balkans. It escapes me as specifically where I know Kosovo has some bears and some mm. mountains and some. You know, if you rock those joggers, are a perfect pant for that sort of activity. Yeah, the pants are the bird dogs pants for fall. We're coming into fall. Thank God. Um, is <laughs> they are the perfect pants for fall, perfect for golf. They're, They're nice great. and trim. They're dressy-ish, so you can wear them to sort of a more formal event. Uh, go to birddogs.com, use promo code OOPS. You're going to get something fun um, with your order and uh, enjoy those bird dogs. Awesome. So, dude, I, it's funny. I've been thinking about what I want my next cool trip to be, and one of the things that I'm definitely highly considering for next year is doing a road trip through all those countries Renting a car, it's really cheap, apparently. Huh. You may know more than I do about that, but that seems, seems like a fun trip to me. Yeah, I think you'd, I think you'd dig it. Yeah. Um, the, the Balkans? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so trying to like hit, hit as many po- countries as possible because I know there's a bunch cluttered in there. So. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. Mm-hmm. there's some cool old cities, too, that are sort of walled cities that are, I guess, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Oh, dope. Things like that, um, which are cool. But I think it is pretty touristy. I got I, I got it. a question for you that's a little uh, off the beaten path from where we've been. Love it. Hit me. So there was a I was at a we were driving back from that gig in Springfield, and we stopped at a gas station mm-hmm. to get some treats. Love it. Because it was a long ride. It was three three hours, three and a half hours. So we stopped for some treats, <laughs> and I walked in some treats, and the guy behind the counter was ringing everybody up and everyone was just paying for their stuff and going back in the car and i had seven or eight items chips and candy and water and a naked you know some kind of a naked juice smoothie whatever and he rings all this stuff up and i he was wearing a name tag his name was ethan <laughs> and he rings me up and he says will that be all and i said yes and he said okay have a nice night and I said, thank you, Ethan. And I looked him in the eye. And he was wearing a mask, but he said, thank you. Good night. And I gathered all my things. I did not take a bag because I'm a freak about bags and just gathered all these things in my arms. Went back. Now, there was this part of me that thought that by reading his name tag and addressing him by his name, that I had somehow done a good deed, mm-hmm. that it meant more to him. I realized that that is a ridiculously egotistical yes. thing Ma- making to think. It, making it about you. Yeah, I, I'm 100% <laughs> aware of me thinking, like, good for you, patting myself on the back, whatever. I made that guy's night. No, I fucking didn't. But <laughs> the flip side I have is, is there a chance that he knows that I obviously just read his name tag, which he has to wear for work, and that by addressing his name and reading off his name tag, that it 
almost is more insulting. Definitely does that, not. Does that make sense? Yes, do you understand why I'm asking that? Definitely not. It, it, it's a, the only two possibilities in my mind are that he, that was you, that's you just feeling self-conscious about the fact that you think you did this good deed that wasn't actually a good deed. It was just you being a decent guy. I think he, the two scenarios are he didn't think twice about it or he was like, wow, that guy was really nice. Only two possibilities in my mind. There's no thought in your mind that maybe I, I read his name tag, which reminded him that he was wearing a name tag, which was somehow in some way condescending on I, my part. It would have only been condescending if you like you took a dollar bill and you you pull you pulled out the slack from both sides, put it on the table, patted the dollar bill down down with your palm, slid it over to him, and said, "You know what, Ethan." You need this more than I do. Or, or yeah, or like <laughs> buy yourself something nice with this. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you get a discount on the treats here. Yeah. This this dollar might be able to go a long way. Yeah. I think there is no world where Ethan felt slighted by you addressing him by his first name. Do you ever do you ever read the name tags of people and then address them by their name? Sometimes. Do you ever make use of the name tag? Sometimes. I just know how self conscious I get when people say my name when they're talking to me. So I tend not to. Like when my shrink would be like Wow, it sounds like you had a really great day, Julio. I that like freaks me out. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's strange. He would say Julio like fifty times during the session, and it was just too many Julios. But I'm his like, I, save the Julios, dude. I have save been us. told that most people like hearing their name. That when you remember someone's name and you address them by it, it means a lot more to them. And I do believe. I that. don't feel that way. But I think in the name tag situation, I think that's very nice. And I do think that there's this guy's like, huh, look at this asshole thinking that he's humanizing me in this dehumanizing job. Fuck that guy. I'm not a person. You there's don't think no that way. you don't. There's no way that was his. Well, reaction. I was with you until the last part. <laughs> <laughs> My thought is I could see him saying, you know, oh, good for you. You read the fucking name tag. You know, let's just not don't yourself. pretend to be my friend. Uh, just take your shit and get out of my I don't face. Think so. No way. That fu- if that guy's that guy has problems if he has that that reaction. I don't think he did because he was very warm. But I, I don't know. I didn't know if maybe somehow it it highlighted a class divide or was like. Does that make sense? Totally. No, totally, dude. Okay. So, dude, it's funny we we're talking about this now with the name thing. I've had two shrinks in my life, two therapists. I always wanted a female therapist. I feel more comfortable talking to a woman, but I've never been able to get one. So I had this one guy first and who like just made me feel good about myself and I loved him. And then the second guy who actually helped me a lot, but who was a little, who would challenge me a bit more, which I wasn't as into. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's the point of therapy, but, anyway. but the first guy dude, he would always say Julio all the time. And he'd be like, that sounds pretty great. Julio sounds like you did great. But he, he one time I was like trying to, me to get a girlfriend like that's what i'd be talking about in therapy i'd be like you know i feel like i'm having trouble finding a lasting relationship with somebody cool so he started making these suggestions for dates and he came up with this really great suggestion for a date he's like dude check this out he's like take her on the chinatown tour and i'm like what's that he goes you go to like a really deep cut chinese restaurant with her like deep in chinatown with like menus that are intimidating you go have a great bite it won't be that expensive then go get bubble tea and spike them with alcohol and then go get foot massages as you drink the spiked bubble teas together. And I was like, this sounds like the, that's fucking good date, dude. It is. It's also a strange thing to hear from a therapist. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, you've been slammed, dude. Well, yeah. What is this guy like the date doctor? I mean, uh, you know, that's so like, <laughs> it's a good date, dude. That's a good NYC date. It's not that expensive. It's different. And like, it's good to sort of take the reins on a date sometimes and have like, options totally and things to it's do. just strange to hear bootleg booze ideas from <laughs> a, a shrink that is funny you know dude speaking of the name ethan i have a fake assistant that i'll fuck with people sometimes with his name's ethan wexler did i ever tell you about this no so i have this email julio's assistant julio assistant at gmail.com <laughs> the signature is ethan wexler and sometimes i'll fuck with my friend i'll be like cool my assistant's gonna email you and uh, you guys can set something up. And they're like, your assistant. And then I like, juliosystem.com, Ethan Wexler. He has his own signature with an address and, uh, you know, office of Julio Gallerati. I like modeled it after the assistance of my agents in the past. And sometimes I'll play it off as real for as long as I can. But then other times I'll make it very obvious that like it's me and I'm fucking with them. Mm-hmm. But it's a, that's a really fun prank to play on your friends. 
make a fake assistant for yourself. Good. Yeah. Because dude, <laughs> you know, like it's not that crazy. No. Like if you told your friends that you had an assistant, like they might believe you. I think they would. You know? Yeah. Uh so I recommend that. I think that's a funny prank. Nice. Um okay, I got I got another thing I want to ask you. Okay. But cool. you I know you have something too. Well, we got an email. Okay. Uh but if you have something No, uh, no. Bring me the email. Because I think we can rock an email and then wrap it up here potentially. Um, okay, so this is, a, I thought was a pretty good one. And uh, let me see what you think. This is called, Do I Ask for the Polaroids Back? Mm. Hey guys, insert how much I like the podcast and listen to you guys, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Anyways, yes. I have run into a little problem and figured it would be interesting to get your take on it and slash to see if either of you have ever run into this problem. While I was dating my boyfriend, I decided as a fun gift for Valentine's Day to give him a few XXX Polaroid pictures of me. A lot of my friends have done this for different occasions. It's an easy gift that you know they will like. Now, fast forward a few months later and we have broken up. Wasn't a bad breakup. However, I did break up with him. Supposedly, there is no bad blood and we were dating first before we tried the whole dating thing. I realized that I didn't actually like him in a romantic way and we were better off as friends. Blah, blah, blah. Haven't spoken to him since and have only heard from our mutual friends. It's taking him some time, but that he's doing okay. I don't think we would ever do anything. Stu I don't think he would ever do anything stupid with the pictures but it still creeps me out that he has them. Am I allowed to ask for them back? Is it strange to see that he got rid of them or do I lose all rights to the photos? Better to text him uh, or ask in person or not at all. I've gotten mixed reviews on this. What would you guys do in this situation? I think, it. it's, I think it's strange to ask for them back. Yeah, I think it's I fine think, to ask him to destroy them though. I think that those are his and you can't ask him to do anything. That's what I really? think. Really? Yep. I think it's fine to say, hey, listen, I realize, you know, this is uncomfortable, but I'm I'm nervous about having naked photos of myself out there. You know, I, I, I leave it to you, but it would make me feel a lot more comfortable if you might like light them on fire or, you know, rip them up and throw them out. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is no world where I would ever oblige. Those are mine. You if someone said that to you, would you lie and say I got rid of them, or would you just be like, "Fuck you"? These I are might, mine. I might lie. If I wasn't mad at the person, I might say, oh, "Got rid of them. Don't even worry about it and keep them." But you'd never destroy them. No. But what about no. if the next girlfriend you were worried about she her finding them? Those are mine, dude. Like, I'm where sorry. Hide, is, where are you hiding them? This is part of my life now, and I have this token, <laughs> and my new girlfriend doesn't have the right to tell me to get rid of them. I mean, we've, I would try we've to keep them this, out of her. We've done this with regular nudes on phones. Yeah, we've had this discussion, but Polaroids are different. So here's the problem with Polaroids and why it's risky. And I, this is something that I'm not proud of and that I'm upset about, but it is happens to be true. An ex girlfriend of mine posed for a Polaroid one time that I took, and while we were dating, I lost it. Oh. Yeah, that's the problem with Polaroids. That's why, in my opinion, Polaroids yeah. are actually riskier than a, a digital copy. Dude. So you have Polaroids at your house. Someone can find them. Someone dude, could stumble upon right. them. Right, and honest, dude, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea where the fuck it could have gone, and it makes me think that like somebody stole it and was like jerking off to it, which is fucked up. Damn. There's, I can't imagine where on earth it would be because I didn't take it from the room that it was in, uh, and I feel bad. I have always felt bad about it. She knew that I had lost it. We kind of joked about it. It ended up being not a big deal. Mm. Um, but be careful with the Polaroids, but I also think... That once you have given him that as a gift, this whole like give me the gift back, if it's not a fucking engagement ring, you're not allowed to ask for stuff back. Mm. It's theirs now. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I do disagree a little. I think I think she's within her rights to say, you know, it would mean a lot to me if you might if you might get rid of those. But even you are acknowledging that it it would make me feel better is the only way you can approach it. Because you yeah, have no right to tell them to get rid of it. Of course. Um, would you get rid of them for the person? I, I would only get rid of them if I then started seriously dating another person. And then it was weird of me to have to be looking at an ex's nudes. So, but just by having the ex's nudes doesn't mean that you're looking at them. And then your new girlfriend would say, well, if you're not looking at them, why don't you just get rid of them? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a tough conversation. It's tough. You know, you hope to avoid having to have that conversation. Uh, 
And this is not suggesting that I have some library of, you know, no, what I, mean? I don't, I know. You know, I don't but, have shit. It's just, but to me, um, let's, let's put the shoe on the other foot. Let's say that, you know, our girls had a slew of dick pics from their ex and one step further, even maybe even pictures of them having sex together. Mm hmm. You knew that they had that somehow. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you want them not to have that anymore? Wouldn't you want them to get rid of that? No, dude. Fucking have a blast with those. You know what I mean? Fucking, I want them, I want people to see you, dude. It wouldn't make you feel weird to no. know that maybe your girl was looking back on her ex's dick? Not at all. Literally not at all. If an ex were to have some sort of I don't, documentation I, of me... No, if I believe you, dude, I swear. I think it's easy to say that, and I don't know for sure if if that scenario presented itself, you would handle it with such a plum. So, wh what situation is presenting itself? You, if somebody's like, if an ex of mine is was like, "Ooh, I was, I, I came across that picture of you the other day that we took. Remember that? Like, is that the situation? No, no, talking I'm about? talking about Hillary. You find out that Hillary has ex nudes of her ex and for some reason she occasionally peruses them so he, th this is the this is the beauty of that question is that i would never find that out so you're subscribing to an ignorance is bliss it's not even ignorance motif. is bliss it's like how would i ever know that i would never look through her shit i would never look through her phone but that's but that's been okay right right i mean if she had polaroids you might find them I would never go looking through her shit, dude. There's never a situation. What if she's hid them, you know, she, under the tea kettle? She would have them in her junk box if she were to have something like that. And I would never go looking in there. Yeah. You know, I just truly, I, there's no scenario where I would find them. If I did, I might be annoyed. Uh, but I just never, I don't see a scenario where I find them. And that is how I feel. For me, I got rid of all ex- ex's nudes one to respect my girlfriend but two because why i don't want any kind of temptation around why make life harder interesting yeah i don't know i'm like i don't want to be pretty looking... good at closing the chapter oh uh, yeah okay yeah so so like even just ha like to be honest if i were to do some deep dive to see if i had nudes it would take me so long that it's ridiculous. I'm like, dude, whatever. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to look at these anyway. They're, if they're somewhere, great. Uh, I don't feel any temptation to like go searching for any sort of scandalous material that I might or might not have uh -huh. stashed away deep in my wherever. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, closing the chapter is getting rid of memories, photos, things like that. Yeah. Which isn't to say that I've deleted every photo I ever had of, of an ex. I mean, I, you know, on Facebook, I'm fairly sure there are pictures I have of, of ex-girlfriends, things like that, but I don't know. How do you feel about going through your live Instagram photos and either deleting or archiving any photos of you with an ex? It's so tricky. It's so tricky um, because I think, I think there are a couple answers to this. One, one is that, you know, you were in a relationship posing for nice photos with that person those are on your instagram feed nothing wrong with that at all mm -hmm. um and there is a part of me that thinks that keeping those up shows confidence and weirdly closure mm -hmm. uh that you, it, it doesn't bother you to to have evidence of this past relationship it didn't end so poorly that you feel like you need to just you know uh what's that movie with jim carrey uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless oh, yeah. mind basically wipe your memory completely wipe them from your world um and yet i also don't really have a problem with people archiving deleting yeah. from their feed i don't really care either way but your let's use your girl as an example if she had photos of her with an ex-boyfriend live on her profile would you be okay with it yeah 100 percent. yeah doesn't bother me at all. Same. I don't care. And I'm pretty sure it could be, I think it's the case too. It is the me. case for me. And I don't care at all. Yeah. It's the case for my girlfriend. No big deal. All right. Well, you know what? A lot of fun today. We talked about cultural appropriation. We talked about erasing old 
nudes. I mean, just everything, ups and downs, hills and valleys, peaks and troughs. Hills and fieros. Oh. <laughs> Gal Fiedi. 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 Um, that is Oops the Podcast, everybody. Send any thoughts you might have to uh, Oops the Podcast at gmail.com. I'm especially intrigued if anyone has any insight on t- the religious practices of weddings. Uh, we are absolutely excited. <laughs> to, to be bringing you this podcast every week <laughs> started that wasn't sure where i was going and uh we'll see you next week thank you guys talk soon bye